Amen. Good morning, Church of God. Parang tulog pa kayo. Ah. Good morning. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. And what are we celebrating today? It's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms that are here. Pwede po ba namin makita ang mga kamay ng mga mothers dito? And may we all invite you to please stand up. To all the mothers, please stand up. Let's give them a round wonderful applause to them. So we would like to let you know that you're doing a great job as a mother. We love you, we value you, and we appreciate you. Sige po, patuloy tayong nakatayo and let's lay our hands to our mothers. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, thank you for our mothers. Lord God, if not for our mothers, Lord God, we would not be here. Lord God, thank you for the strength you've been giving them. Lord God, thank you for the patience and the love, Lord God, that you're giving for their husbands, Lord God, and for their children, Lord. And Lord God, I know some of them are tired, some of them are weary, some of them are burdened, Lord God. Some of them, Lord God, are going through tough times in life, Lord God. But Lord, you alone be the one to sustain them. You alone, Lord God, let them feel the love. Lord God, if they're not in joy, Lord God, give them the joy, give them the hope, Lord God, give them the peace for their lives. Lord, and Lord, allow them to move forward in life. We love you so much, God, and bless them all the more. Bless them in this day. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen. Amen. And once again, palakpakan natin ang ating mga nanay. Amen. God bless to all the moms. And with regards to that, it's Mother's Day. It's a special day for all our mothers. And you know what? The mothers had been doing a great job in our lives. Amen? Since our childbirth, diba? they've been doing great. They've been enduring all the pain in life while giving birth to each and every one of us. May hindi ba nang galing sa nanay dito? Diba? Of course, all of us went through the womb and tayo dyan nai nilabas. And you know what? The mothers endured all the pain for all of us. You know what, as the mother, as we grow up, as the children grows up, as the family grows up, they would also endure all the pain there, give all the efforts. They would give their best. Tama po ba yung mga nanay? Diba? They would give their best for their husband. They would give their best for their children from childhood to being a youth. And, and yun po, they endure all tests. But you know what, in their lives as well, bilang mga nanay, as mothers, sometimes they also feel that they are unappreciated. Is that right, mothers? Sometimes they feel that they are not valued. Why? Sometimes there would be a time that uh, the mother would prepare a dinner for her husband, a special dinner, but the husband doesn't know about it. And he's so stressed at work, so busy, and when he arrives home, he's full of stress, full of anger, and would go straight to sleep. That happens, right? So the mother would feel unappreciated, would feel unvalued. Or sometimes when the mother is just so loving to her children, sometimes she gets to scold her children, gets to be angry, but it's out of love. But what, do, what does the children do? What does the youth do? They would answer back. And when the children answers back, the mothers feel unappreciated and not valued, right? So some mga mothers don't cry yet. It's not yet altar call. Later, you could cry at the altar. But today, that's what we're going to talk about today. When we're unappreciated, we're, when we are not valued and we're tired, we've given all, we've exhausted everything, when we get to that point, we fret. We fall short. We give up. We say, ayoko na. It's over. This game is over for me. For the fathers, they have a different story. For the children, they have a different story. And when we're at that point, when we fret, when we say, it's over for me, what is God's word for all of us? In Psalm, 100, in Psalm 37 verse 4, it says here, when you're at that moment, when you're getting tired, when we're, you're getting so fed up of life, this is God's word for you. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Could we bow down your heads and let us pray? Hallelujah. Far in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, we invite your presence to be in this place. Oh God, we could not do this by might, nor by power, but only by your spirit. Lord, today we ask for your anointing. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your favor upon us, Lord God. Allow us to delight, Lord God, in your word, to delight in your presence, Lord God. You're our joy, Lord God. The blessing comes from you. And Lord Jesus Christ, we claim the victory over the service and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. 
Amen and amen. Could just give God our very best clap offering. So God says in his word, delight yourself in the Lord that he may give us the desires of our hearts. Of course, we have our own desires in our lives. But one thing that we want is success in life. Who wants success in life? But we want success. We want the victory. That's why we push so hard. We give our all effort. We give our very best. And as we continue to be in this race, you know what? This race of life is not a 100-meter dash. It's not a 200-meter dash. It's a marathon. Sometimes it's a one-day marathon. It's a three-day marathon. And we want, we desire endurance para makatagal tayo sa race na ito. And as we try to move forward, of course, we get tired in life. As we move forward in this life, sometimes we get so burdened, we get so weary. And one desire that we want is we just want to have a, uh, a rest in our life. So lang natin makahinga in life from all our busyness, from all our tiredness. And how do we get that now? God says, delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And when we say delight, what comes to mind when we say delight? Delight? Ano ba yung delight? So in a very hot weather, we see all the posts there. Uh, some uh, are, are feeling the heat, especially tomorrow. The, the heat's gonna be great. Say election na naman. But aside from that, the, the weather is so hot. And sometimes this is our delight. This is what we want. Do you like that today? Oh, so treat nyo po yung mga mommies nyo ng ice cream delight. For a very hot weather, this is our delight. This, is, this would quench the heat in our lives. This would quench the heat of the weather. And this gives us happiness. Gives, this gives us rest. This gives us delight. It makes us happy. But you know what? In the Bible, delight doesn't mean just being happy. Delight just does, does not mean just ice cream that makes us happy. But you know what? In the Bible, it's, in the Hebrew word, it means aunag. Could you tell that your seatmate, aw, nag. So hindi yan, aw, nag na naman ng nag si mami. <laughs> hindi yung ganun, ha? Kasi I experienced that as well. Mom nags at nags at me and, aw, nakakainis na. Yeah, dumadating tayo sa ganun point. But aw, nag, is, it doesn't mean like that. But aw, nag means for us to delicate. So God says in His Word, delicate yourself in the Lord. And what does delicate mean? That you fragile yourself in God's presence. Handle it with care. Handle yourself with care in the presence of our God. Because we're delicate, we're fragile, and let's stay in God's presence. So how do we do that? How do we delight? How do we delicate ourselves? How do we make ourselves fragile in God's presence? In verse 1 it says, Do not fret because of evildoers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. So God's telling us, do not fret. Do not fret. And what does fret mean? Fret means to burn or be kindled by anger. That's what it means. Fret means to burn or be kindled by anger. So when we get angry pala, when we get mad, when we get fed up, that's how we fret. And what happens when we fret just like this guy? Do you know this guy? Do you remember his case? You don't know Jason Ivler. Why? Because he was driving and another man was driving in front of him and they had that contact and they were mad. Both of them were mad. They were angry and they had a road rage. You see, they had a road rage. And what happened? Jason Ivler shot that man who was driving on the other car. Little did he know. Little did he know that the, the one he shot was the son of a Malacanang officer. And because of that, he was put into jail. So he was fed up, he was angry, his anger was kindled, and he fret. And because he had fret, he snapped. His emotions snapped, and when he snapped, he was able to do evil things. He was able to do foolish things because he fret. His anger was kindled. And what happens? What ano bang reason? What is the reason why we fret? Why do, why do Christians fret? Why do people fret? Number one, because we are tempted into sin. Could you ask your seatmate, are you tempted today? Some of us, most of us are tempted into sin. 
And the, the struggle is real. The war is real. It's so hard to battle with temptation. It's so hard to win over the sin. And when our emotions are, are kindled, our anger is kindled, we are led to do foolish things. We are led to do evil things. And sometimes the reason why we fret, why? Because we are unappreciated by most people. Bakit ano nga ang mami mo ngayon? Na-appreciate ba kita this morning? Di ba? Minsan hindi, na, hindi natin alam na hindi natin na-appreciate ang ating mothers. And when we're appreciated, just like our moms, when we feel unvalued, we get angry, we get mad. And later on, we're gonna fret in life. And finally, okay, I could deal with sin. Okay, I could deal with that I'm not, uh, I'm not appreciated in life. But as we give our very best, as we give our all in life, this makes us fret when nothing is happening in our lives. We've given our all. We've exhausted all our efforts. Everything, we've thrown it out. But when nothing happens, our anger is kindled in our hearts and we fret. So what happens when we fret? What happens to people that fret? This is what happens in verse 2. It says, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So when people fret, when we do evil things, when we do foolish things, sabi ng Painon, we're gonna be like the grass. And when a grass is cut, do you think twice? When you cut the grass, do you think another time thrice? Diba? You won't say, ah, oh, yung naman yung grass. Diba? Hindi mo sabihin yun, unlike a flower. When we cut down a flower, we would think twice, you would think thrice. Why? Because it's a flower, it's something beautiful. But when we do evil things, when we do foolish things, God would, think, would not think twice to cut us. Not only that, God says, we're going to wither as a green herb. So this is an example of a herb. This is a rosemary herb. Are you familiar with this herb? So this herb is used by my mom to cook for us the best steak that she could ever give us. So mahilig po magluto ang aking mommy. And yan po niluluto niya, steak with rosemary herb. And when a herb is fresh, it's delicious. It's pleasing. It's delightful for our lives. It's fresh. The herb, the rosemary herb is wonderful. But you know what? When the herb withers, it looks like this. It looks dry and it's useless. So when we falter, when we fret, when we do evil things and foolish things, we're going to be cut down like grass. We're going to be like a herb that is useless. Wala na. Why? Because we had fret. And you know what? I'm also at that point right now. Why? It's like nine months. Nine months na ba tayo dito sa Marriott? It's almost nine months here at Marriott. So it's a continuous streak. We've been here every Sunday. I've been preaching every Sunday. But you know what? I'm also human. Like I also just like the reasons why we fret. I also am tempted to sin. Sino hindi tempted sa sin? Diba? All of us are tempted to sin. It doesn't mean that I'm here on stage. I'm not tempted into sin. I'm also tempted into sin and I try to battle it every day against lust. I, I don't want to fall into sin. I battle it. I don't want to win. I want to win over sin and I fight it with all my heart. But sometimes, diba, when we fall into sin, it, it cracks us. It makes us fret. But not only that, as we battle over sin, I also hear people saying, for the, for the course of this month, sabi nila, I heard, heard something like this, this man is crazy. AJ is crazy. Why would he plant a church at Marriott? It's so expensive. 100,000 per month? That's crazy. What, what is he gonna do with that? It's better to invest in other churches. Poor churches give the money to poor churches. Give the money to the Genblas building in Dasmarinas so that the building may be finished. And when you, when you hear some things like that, you feel unappreciated. You feel unvalued, right? And it makes us fret. But for me, it's, it doesn't matter. I, I, I battle with sin. I won't, I won't mind. I, I feel unappreciated and the others won't value me. Don't mind. But this is my fretting point. When I tell God, Lord, I've been doing my everything at Marriott. Or God, I've been conducting Bible studies every night. I go into the streets. But Lord, every Sunday, Lord, why are we not growing? Why is nothing happening in our church? Our attendance right now is still 120 to 130. And I ask God, Lord, why is it like this? Lord, I'm at my fretting point and for, for so many months, Lord, why is nothing happening? 
And for some of the members here, I know you feel that and you're asking why. And you may be asking me why and I don't know as well why. And it leads us to our fretting point when we're tempted into sin, when we feel unappreciated by many, when, when nothing is happening in our lives, we're at our fretting point. And when we are at our fretting point, what do we do? When we're at this situation, what should be done? In the next verse, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. When you're at your fretting point, when you're at your fretting point, trust in the Lord and do good. Why? So how do we trust in the Lord? I have an illustration here held by our admin head. It's Carmi Sarno. And how, how do we trust in the Lord? So this fragile jar is that Carmi is holding, this is our dreams. This is our goals. This is our wants in life. And when we have something just like this precious, fragile, delicate jar, we, we hold it, right? Ayun pa hawak sa akin So we, we hold it so dearly. Why? Because it's special to us. This jar is personal to us and we won't want to let it go. We hold it tightly because this is our dreams, this is our plans, this is what we want in life. Just like me, this is one of my lifelong dreams. I promised my dad to buy him one of these. So it's some BMW when I was in college, when I was young. I promised him, Dad, you know what? I'm going to buy you a BMW. I promise you that. And that's one of my dreams. That's one of my lifelong dreams. That is our fragile jar. And this is what we want. This is special to us. And when we have something special to us, we don't want to entrust it to anybody. We don't want to entrust it to our friends. We don't want to entrust it to our family members. We just want to take hold of it because we want to take control of it because we want it to happen. We want our dreams to happen in our lives. But God is telling us, entrust it to me. So, but, paano tayo si Carmi? Ayaw ibigay, di ba? Matitigas ang ulo natin. Ayaw natin ibigay yung ating dreams. But God says, trust in the Lord and do good. And why do we, why do we fret? Because our fretting point comes from doubting God. As we reach for our dreams, as we reach for our plans, as we do our programs, it's very tiring, right? It's very, it's very hard. It's, it makes us weary. It, it causes burnout. Why we put it in our hands? And, and later on, we're gonna fret. We're gonna fall short. We're gonna fall. Why? Because we put it in our own hands. So how do we do God? In verse 5 it says, So commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him. And He shall bring it to pass. So entrust it. Entrust your dreams to God. Entrust it into God's hands. It's safe in God's hands. Commit it. This is our dreams. This is our plans. This is what we want to happen. But you know what? It's safer in God's hands. That's what it means to commit it to the Lord. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's, what God would do with this jar, this fragile jar. But you still give it to the Lord because you trust Him with it. And how do we commit it to the Lord? This is what it says in the next verse. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Dwell in the land. This, why this jar, this fragile jar, is not just your dreams. This fragile jar is not just your plans. This fragile jar, this delicate jar, is you and me. It is you and me. This fragile jar is you and me. And God is saying, dwell in God's presence. Feed on God's faithfulness. Peg yourself in the Lord. Don't get out from this yakap ng Panginoon. Just stay in God's hands. Rest in the Lord, says in His word. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Are you tired today? Are you weary? Do you feel unvalued? Are you fed up? Are you at your fretting point? God says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for what God can do. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. 
It's very tempting when we see our batchmates being successful. It's very tempting when we see people going higher than us. When, when people succeed, it's very tempting. But you know what? Not most of them are doing it the right way. Why? Because some of them, because of him who brings wicked schemes to pass. Some of them does it ng may padulas with foolishness and evilness. So God says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Do not fret. Just remain in God's presence. Why? For evildoers shall be cut off. When we commit sin, when we do foolishness, when we do evilness, when we go out from God's presence, we shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the land. Those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the land. So God is telling us right now, delicate yourself unto the Lord. And I remember a person, you may not know her, but some of you may know her, and her name is Nanay Alice. So some of you may know her not. But you know what? Nanay Alice is a dedicated Christian. She's a, she's a woman of faith. But you know what? She started young in working. Why? Because they had a poor family. So she needed to stop school. Why? Because she needed to work, to do business for her siblings. That's what she did at a very young age. And what did she do? She sold mangoes to the people. She, she sold rice. And they, the people love her rice. Why? Because she would separate the good rice and the bad and only the best rice she would sell. So that's what she'd been doing while she was young until, until she grew old. But you know what? She also came to her fretting point. Why? Because in her 20s, you know what? She was harassed by the Japanese. Why? Her, her sacks of rice was pierced. But she would still move forward and continue on. In the 1960s, when she already had her family, she was, her, her business improved. She, her stall of Telahan textile garments were, was in Divisoria. But you know what? In Divisoria, lagi may, may sunog. There was always fire at Divisoria. So, uh, yung isang may time na nasunog yung kanyang textile store. So, she would gather all that she could get and bring it home. And then the fire would subside. And the next day, she would go back to that store and plant again. But it doesn't happen once lang. It happened twice. The fire happened twice, thrice, four times. But then again, she would go back to the store. Why? She would want to feed her family. Why? Because her husband died at an early age, died at an early year, and she would need to establish her family alone. Not only that, that's, what, that's, that's not her fretting point, but you know what? When she was giving birth for her youngest son, she was having problems pala with her kidney. And the whole family didn't know about it. Well, because she's strong. She's going to move forward. No one's going to stop her. And yes, the youngest son was born. And she, in, all, in all those fretting points, in all those hardships, she never gave up. She just rested in the Lord, waited patiently for God's blessing. And you know what? This is the product of her life. One of her sons... One of her sons became a pastor. And yan po ang aking daddy, si Pastor Anthony Velasco. And one of her daughters is here, si Sister Mirna Arcega. Sige po. Sige, if you want to clap for her, you may clap for her. And a nanay who started young, not rich, no wealth, still moved forward in her fretting points in life. And what she became wealthy. Even in my generation, I experienced her riches and wealth. Dahil lagi niya akong bibigyan ng pera every Sunday when she was still alive. You know what? She would never miss a Sunday in support for my dad. Lagi siya nandun sa harap to attend the service. So, happy Mother's Day to Dola Alice. And you know what? This is a story of a person, of a woman who didn't fret. In spite of all the hardships of life, in spite of the, all the cruelty and evilness of this life, she continued to move forward. She rested in the Lord, waited patiently for God's blessing, and it, when it was there, 
she was ready to catch it. And you know what? This is the blessing of her life. Her last one million pesos was given to the Church of God, Das Marinas. That's why meron po ang Caruso Christian Academy dun po sa ating Dasma. It's, it's schooling elementary students and high school students until this day. So yan po ang resulta that's a result of a, a person, of a woman who endured all the tests of life. It was not easy. But she didn't do it alone. She did it with our God. And this is God's promise for us when we just delight ourselves in the Lord. When we delight ourselves in the Lord. In Psalm 1, 1 to 3, it says, Blessed is the man who his delight is in the law of the Lord. Who his delight is in God's presence. Is your delight is to be in God's hands or in your own hands? But blessed is the man who delights in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You're gonna be blessed that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. That's what happens when we remain, when we delight in God's presence. And that's what God's word for all of us all of us today. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delicate yourself in God's presence and He shall give you the desires of your heart. So this fragile jar is you. This fragile jar, this delicate jar is you and me. And are you at your fretting point today? Are you saying, Lord, it's so hard. This life is so hard. Full of temptation. Lord, I feel unappreciated, unvalued, Lord. Lord, nothing's happening in my life today, Lord. And are you tired today? Are you fed up? Are you about to give up? But God is telling you right now, are you willing to delegate yourself in my presence, in my hands? And if you choose that, everything's going to be all right for your life. So as the praise and worship sings this song, you're saying, Lord, I want to delegate myself in you. I invite you to come to the altar and we will pray for you. So as the worship team sings this song, you're free to come to Jesus.
We just raise up our hands today in act of surrender to God. All our tiredness, all our pains, all our sorrows, all our trials, struggles, testings, and temptation, raise it all high to Jesus Christ. We raise up our hands in an act of surrender to God. Sabayan niyo po ako sa panalangin nito. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, I come back to you. I come back to you. For I could do nothing. For I could do nothing without you. Without you. Lord God, you've seen my efforts. Lord God, you've seen my efforts. You've seen my pains. You've seen my pains. You've seen my sorrow. You've seen my sorrow. You've seen all I've done, God. You see all that I've done, God. But Lord, I also get tired. But Lord, I also get tired. I'm only human. And I experience pain. And I experience pain in my life. In my life. And today, and today, I run to you. I run to you. I come to you. I come to you for refuge. For refuge. For rest. For rest in my life. In my life. I delicate myself. I delicate myself in your presence. In your presence. I delight myself. I delight myself in your presence. In your presence. And I believe. And I believe. And I'm in your presence. I'm in your presence. Nothing. Is impossible. is impossible. Blessings, Blessings will, flow will flow in my life, in my life. From, this day from this day forward. Hallelujah. Just give God our very best clap offering. Hallelujah, Lord. Today we're all blessed to be in God's house. It's a blessing to be in this place and we find strength in the presence of our God. And Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, thank you for this wonderful day. Lord God, thank you for allowing us to receive your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for communing with us, for having fellowship with us. And Lord God, all the pain, all the tiredness, Lord God, I know, Lord God, you've refreshed us. You've rebuilt us, Lord God. You re-energized us today, Lord, to move forward in our lives. And today, Lord, we just offer our lives to you as a pleasing sacrifice. If we could all raise up our tithes and offering to our God, this is our worship. This is not ours. This is the Lord's. And we give it to Him in worship. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for these tithes and offering. Lord, thank you for our financial wealth, for the financial blessings of our lives. Lord God, let not this rule over us, Lord. Lord God, sometimes we try to work so hard, work it all out. But sometimes, Lord, we don't have time anymore for our family. We don't have time anymore for our ministry. Why? Because we want to work, work, work. For what? For money. And Lord God, it's useless. This money will wither away. But Lord Jesus Christ, in your presence, there is strength. In your presence, there is joy. In your presence, there is love. That's the only way, Lord God, it's the only place where we want to be. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your people who are in this place. And Lord God, let your presence just flow in their lives. Lord God, today, as we have raised up our hands, God, we have committed our lives to you. My God, from this day forward, we delicate ourselves in you. We take care of ourselves in you. And for sure, 
our lives will be taken care of, Lord God, by you, Lord God. We love you so much, God. We claim the victory. We give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. Go in peace and happy Mother's Day. Today, we would just like to honor our mothers so the kids, the Sunday schoolers, have prepared something special for our mommy. So, headed by Tita Grace. Happy Mother's Day, everyone.